A deeply unsettling trend is emerging from the dark quarters of the Internet as death threats from QAnon conspiracy theorists are being focused more and more, for lack of a better term, term on normal people. Such threats used to be only made against high-profile figures, say Dr. Anthony Fauci or Bill Gates. But as the New York Times reports, increasingly, even professors and researchers without much of a public persona have faced intimidation from extremists and conspiracy theorists. The writer of that story joins me now. Tiffany Hsu covers disinformation for The New York Times. This is fascinating as just as much as it is frightening. You detail, for example, the story of a French scientist whose ideas about unclogging cities led to death threats, comparisons to notorious dictators like Hitler and Stalin. What is going on out there? Yeah, so I wrote about a fellow named Carlos Moreno. And for 40 years, ever since he moved to France from Colombia, he's been a well-regarded professor in Paris. Uh, he came up with an idea about in 2010. He formalized it in 2016, and it's called the 15-Minute City. And the idea is basic, that everyday destinations like schools, stores, and offices should be only a short walk or bike ride away from home. No borders, no barriers. The 15-minute city is all about accessibility for residents. This was an idea that you know was popular among a lot of mayors. It gained a lot of traction uh, during the pandemic, but it wasn't until February that the conspiracy theorists came out of the woodwork. And all of a sudden, for the first time in Mr. Moreno's four-decade career, he started to get death threats. Um, people were saying, Pablo Escobar should have killed your family. Your punishment will arrive. You should be nailed into a coffin. You should be run over by a cement roller. You're like Stalin. You're like Hitler. You're public enemy number one. And Mr. Moreno, after a long career in academia, was totally unprepared to deal with this because, as he told me, I'm a scientist. I, what I do is I, I research. Why would anyone hate me so much for an idea that is meant to do good for people? I mean, that's really, to me, the heart of this reporting, because so many of these threats are being directed at scientists and, and particularly studying COVID. In a survey of 321 such scientists who had given media interviews, the journal Nature found that 22 percent, 22 percent had received threats of physical violence or sexual violence, and 15 percent had received death threats. One vaccine scientist later died by suicide. I mean, so... Within that community, is anything being done to protect people from threats, from harassment? How are they dealing with this? I've spoken to multiple scientists, researchers, professors who said there isn't much training um, in, in this field because you don't go into fields like this expecting random people on the Internet to threaten you and abuse your family. And so there is a growing movement to ask for universities, ask for think tanks to prepare their employees for this kind of abuse online. So having a staff of people who are, are trained to kind of wipe your presence from the internet, to make sure that your address and your personal information aren't easily discoverable, to offer you counseling. but. It isn't something that's that's baked into the infrastructure at this point. And, and so Professor Marino told me that he and his team often have felt alone uh, in the past few weeks. Tiffany Hsu, I recommend the article to folks who really want to understand what's going on out there. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being on the show.